Hey, it's Dr. Brian Mole, the diabetes coach. I am a master licensed diabetes educator, a certified diabetes care and education specialist, and IFM certified in functional medicine. I help people to reverse type 2 diabetes, insulin resistance, and metabolic dysfunction by finding and fixing the underlying root causes. And I want to welcome you to another episode of Ask the Diabetes Coach. I got a question here today from one of my recent webinars, and it's from Jean in Springdale. Jean asks, what is the best ratio of fat, fiber, and protein for the first meal of the day? So Jean, I am going to answer that question, but I'm going to talk more broadly about macronutrients at each meal of the day, and then I will address the first meal of the day specifically. Before I do that, I just want to say if you like these videos and you like the content I'm putting out, please give this video a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel and click that bell for notifications so that you don't miss any of my new videos, which I've been uploading every single week. You can also support me if you'd like or say thank you by buying me a coffee. There's a link below this video in the description to buy me a coffee. All right, so now let's answer Gene's question and talk about macronutrients at each meal and specifically fat, fiber, and protein. So fat, fiber, and protein are great buffers for glucose in our diet. If you're eating carbohydrates at your meals in the form of fruit or vegetables, or you're still eating some grains like rice or starchy vegetables like potatoes or beans and legumes, which contain starch as as well, if you're eating any of those foods, we want to buffer them with fat, fiber, and protein. And there is research that eating those three types of foods or those three food components first will actually help you to delay gastric emptying, will delay glucose absorption, and will help to prevent blood sugar spikes. You're still going to get the glucose into your system, but you're going to blunt the glucose spike, which will blunt the insulin surge, which can help to keep your blood sugar more level and prevent the highs and lows that often come with blood sugar dysregulation. So again, this is most important if you are eating some carbohydrate. Again, you're eating some fruit, you're eating some sort of starchy vegetable or a sugary vegetable like carrots, for example, or sweet potatoes, or something with some starch or sugar in it, whether it's natural or added. When that's the case, we wanna make sure we get plenty of fiber with the food. So either you're eating fiber foods like fibrous vegetables. Of course, beans do have quite a bit of fiber and some resistant starch as well, which acts like fiber. But we want to be getting at least 10 grams of fiber in each meal, especially if we're eating carbohydrate-rich foods. Another way to add some fiber and some healthy fat is with some nuts and seeds. You can do a handful of almonds. You can chop some nuts to put them on top of or in your smoothie or on top of your chia seed or basil seed pudding. You can have some almond butter with your half of an apple, for example, to add some fat and fiber from the almond butter, or you can just eat some walnuts, for example, when you eat that orange or half a grapefruit to delay the absorption of that glucose from the meal. And we also want to be doing some protein as well. So it's important to not just eat carbohydrates or just carbs and fat together. We want to be getting protein and in fact, prioritizing protein every time we eat. So some sort of healthy protein, usually the fat will come with the protein, but if you're eating a leaner protein, then you can use some healthy fats as well. We don't need to add a lot of fat, but we can eat some foods that have natural fats, like again, nuts and seeds or avocado, olives, or meats that have fats already in them or with them. So at every meal, not just the first meal of the day, we want to be making sure we're getting some fat and protein as well as some fiber and minimizing 
carbohydrates. So to answer Gene's question, what's the best ratio? We want to be prioritizing protein. So generally at least 30 to 40 grams of protein per meal. Generally you want about 1.2 to 2 grams of protein per kilogram of optimal body weight per day. That's about 0.6 to 0.9 grams per pound of optimal body weight. If you're highly active or doing a lot of resistance training, you can take that up even more to about one gram per pound of body weight or optimal body weight, but most people don't need that much protein. So about 30 to 40 grams of protein per meal will usually get you into that range of 1.25 to 2 grams per kilogram of optimal body weight then the goal is to get about 10 to 15 grams of fiber per meal. We want to get around 40 grams of fiber per day optimally, and that's good for our lipid health. It's actually good for the kidneys. It'll help us eliminate waste products, and again, it'll blunt that glucose absorption from our foods, so it'll help to reduce glucose excursions and keep your glucose curve nice and flat after meals. Fiber also stimulates GLP-1 in the lower small intestine, so we get a better insulin response, we get a suppression of glucagon, and we feel more full and satiated after our meals. And fiber serves as a great prebiotic food for the microbiome in a healthy gut. Generally, we wanna keep carbohydrates fairly low, depending on your activity level and metabolic health, usually around 15 to 20 grams of carbohydrates per meal or less is going to be optimal and definitely avoid or eliminate processed and refined grains like flours and refined sugar completely from the diet. We don't wanna be adding extra sugar in any form and we don't want to be adding extra oils in any form which brings us to fat so what is the best ratio of fat in each meal and that is going to largely depend on your goals are you trying to lose weight and body fat are you trying to maintain weight or are you trying to gain weight fat is the ultimate lever for energy balance. So if you're trying to gain weight, you're going to need to add more fat in addition to bumping up the carbs a bit and adding more protein, as well as doing things like resistance training and reducing cardio. If you wanna lose weight or lose fat, burn body fat, then you've gotta reduce your fat intake and get into a negative energy balance or an energy deficit, so you force your body to burn your own stored body fat. So fat is like a big dial that we're gonna dial up or down based on our goals. We wanna eat enough fat to feel satisfied and make sure our body has plenty of energy to run and to prime the body to burn its own stored body fat, but if you overconsume fat, you're going to displace the oxidation of your own stored body fat. How do you know if you're eating too much body fat? You're not losing weight. If your weight is stable or if you're gaining weight and you're eating low carb and prioritizing protein, that means you're over consuming fat. So you have to reduce your fat intake while keeping your carbohydrate intake low and prioritizing protein enough to where your body is forced to start burning your own stored body fat. So are there any differences between meals? A little bit. We tend to be more insulin sensitive in the middle of the day than we do earlier in the day. So if you are going to have carbohydrate rich foods like fruits and or some starchy vegetables, I would have those for either lunch or dinner, not for breakfast. At breakfast, we are more glucose intolerant and insulin resistant naturally. That's the circadian rhythm. So in the morning, we want to stick to protein and healthy fat, and you can get a little bit of fiber as well. The fiber is more important when you're eating your carbohydrates for lunch or dinner. So that's when you want to really make sure you're getting in some fibrous vegetables. Or if you want to, you can use a fiber supplement like our super fiber blend product, which I'll put in the description below this video for anybody who wants a really good high quality fiber supplement. And that's about the only real, and that's the main difference between 
meal. So Gene, I hope that answers your question for everybody else listening. Remember to prioritize protein, use fat, fiber, and protein as a buffer for any carbohydrates or glucose that you're consuming. Eat your carbs later in the day rather than earlier in the day when you're more insulin sensitive. And if you are eating carbs, remember to walk after meals and get some exercise to blunt that glycemic or glucose excursion. Okay, this is Dr. Brian Mole, the diabetes coach. If you want more information about how to reverse type 2 diabetes or control blood sugar, I do have a free guide called the Blood Sugar Manifesto. There's a link in the description below this video where you can download that for free. And as always, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to this channel and click the bell for notifications so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. I'm releasing one to two videos every week, including these Ask the Diabetes Coach segments. So that's all for this video. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you back on the next video.